on my way to Vogue. Yay. Hi friends. Happy Sunday. I am going to recap uh, Vogue Knitting Live New York for you today. Um, this won't be a normal episode. And yeah, because it's gonna be all about my experience at Vogue Knitting Live as well as the purchases that I made and some of what I was thinking as I was um, in the marketplace walking around and all that good stuff. So settle in, get a drink or something. I have tea somewhere uh, over here. I'm drinking David's tea. I love um, this Midsummer's Night Dream, I think it's called, or Midsummer's Night. Maybe it's just Midsummer's Night, but it's apples and orange flavored. Especially more emphasis on the orange, at least to me, and I just love that flavor. So, um, and also, this isn't a normal episode. Hi, wait, let me tell you who I am. My name is Shannon Bellum. <laughs> I'm from New Jersey. That's what the badge looks like for Vogue. Um, I am, I hope you are okay with me looking so plain and relaxed. I'm in sweatpants and a t-shirt that I purchased at the show and just a shawl around my around my neck um, and no eye makeup on. I'm giving my eyes a rest because I was wearing a lot of makeup the last couple days and I just wanted to rest. <laughs> my hair too. I just did a very, very Low key, very low key today, that's a good word. Low key, all about the self-care. I'm exhausted, I'm sure everyone else who's been at Vogue, who worked Vogue, is exhausted too. Um, it was a very exciting, fun-filled couple days. Um, and yeah, so let me take you through it. Let me, let me um, talk to you about what I did and what my thoughts were as I was walking around the marketplace. So Vogue this year was quite different um, than to me. It had a different feel. And I don't know if it was me or if it was them. <laughs> I think it was me. And it wasn't about the race and diversity stuff that's been circulating in the Instagram online um, community. I think it was more about um, maybe me just kind of gaining more insight into like understanding the structure of the knitting community better. I think that's really what it was. I think I have a better grasp of the structure uh, and who, how, you know, who's popular versus, you know, not so much and who's moving to the front, who's moving up to the front, who's receding into the background. Like, I think I just had a better grasp of that, um, of, the, of that as a, you know, just as a organization, like as a community. I had a better grasp of the community this time around. And I think that really helped me um, with my purchases and also just in my evaluating, being able to evaluate a new place or a new, a new um, vendor and stuff. So, so yeah, it felt good. It felt really good to have a little bit better um, knowledge of what's going on. I'm in my little crafty corner of um, my living room and um, yeah, all my stuff from Vogue's on the bed. All right, so Vogue, if you're not familiar, in New York, is a weekend, I think it's a four-day event. So it starts Thursday evening and um, with classes, and then it continues on to Friday and Saturday and Sunday. So there's still it's still going on now. I only went, I decided to just go on Friday night, as is my usual custom. This was my third year in a row going. Um, so I decided to, I like to go to the marketplace on Friday because normally it's quite empty um, and it's easy to get around and get in booths because I'm the type of person that if a booth is too crowded, I just won't go in. I say to myself, I'll, I'll circle back to it later and just see if I can navigate it. I would have to really, really, really want some particular yarn 
to muscle my way through and to deal with um, all the other people because it takes a lot of patience and I think in a big event like Vogue where there's a lot to see it's hard for me to have the patience to sit there to stand there and try to get push my way up to yarn that I'm not even positive I'm gonna buy so anyway I'll tell you which booths <laughs> I did um, get into so um, I as I said I went on Friday and um, I decided to um, take the opportunity since I was going in on Friday to attend a couple classes so I um, attended um, Nora Gon's lecture on what she uses what digital tools she uses when she designs so she went through them it was interesting it was good for me to hear like what another designer does digitally the funny thing is like um, so if you're a new viewer you may not know but I design I'm a former 7th Avenue knitwear designer and um, I designed knits on 7th Ave from about 1985 until about 1996 and about two years before I left um, the industry maybe three we shopped for digital um, materials digital we were shopping for a computer system basically that could do design work for us that could we could draw with and we could chart with and um, my company ended up purchasing for a, a, a really ridiculous sum, considering it was the 90s as well. It was probably close to 100000 They purchased a system for us to design on. Crazy. I think it's crazy. It's funny, you know, I still really love working with, by hand. And I used to chart by hand before my company bought. Like, I charted everything by hand for, for the factories. It wasn't for consumers um, it was for the factories <laughs> to follow our patterns so we would chart the patterns ship them off to Hong Kong or China and they would get manufactured there so it was a really different way of working um, I like charting I like charting I like drawing by hand for sure I don't really enjoy drawing on a computer but I guess if you were cranking out a bunch, well, our old way was just making copies. We would just draw once and make a bunch of copies. And then you have your silhouette that you can draw a whole bunch of different combos. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you don't have a copier in your house, then probably using a computer is better. So, yeah, I attended that. Um, that was one hour. The lectures are all about one hour. And there was, like, you can see the brochure online if you're wondering, like, what other things there were to see. You can check it out online on there. They have a guide um, for their show of all the classes and all the lectures that were going on. Um, the cool thing about Vogue is that it's virtually, like, it's probably one of the few shows where practically everyone who's anyone in the knit world designers yarn well yarn manufacturers I think tend to be more regional um, but pretty much all of those designers and all of the um, book writers and all the people that are like paving paths um, paving is the wrong word forging paths <laughs> in knitting are there so Conceivably, like if you're willing to really spend big bucks, you could see all of them. Like, so Nora Gone, uh, Deborah Newton, um, oh my gosh, so many people. Andrea Mowry. Hohe wasn't there. Hohe Locatelli didn't come this year. She has been there in past years. Um, Stephen West. All of those people that we, you know, love to follow were there. Um, and I saw, I saw a lot of them. I saw Andrea, I saw Stephen, um, Nora, of course I attended a lecture. The second lecture I went to was by, oh gosh, her name's not on this badge. It was, um, oh, Laura Bryant. Um, and it was called, it's a numbers game. And I wasn't really sure what to expect. I was just thinking more about like, well, I have an hour to kill before Marketplace <laughs> opens. So maybe I'll just go to this one and you do pay if you're gonna go to the lectures you do pay 
um, for them. You do, and the room was was pretty full for both of these. Um, so Laura's, I believe it's Laura. If I'm wrong, I'll correct it on screen. But Laura's um, lecture was quite interesting. She talked a lot about numbers in knitting, and it wasn't just about stitch count and all of that. She just talked about Nora uh, about uh, Nora Nora numbers in in life and then also in knitting so that was really really interesting i enjoyed her lecture quite a lot um, a lot more than i expected i actually think for design inspiration i got more from um laura's lecture than i did from nora's lecture but that's that's okay again i like didn't have a lot of expectations with either one so from there I went, to, that lecture ended at 4.30, and from there I went and stood in line to get into the marketplace. And um, if you're not familiar, you're just going to see my floor plan here with notes. Um, so if you're not familiar, the marketplace is two floors. So what I did was I printed this out at home, um, and then I indicated with a black marker the booths that I wanted to make sure I stopped by. And I didn't rule out the other ones. These were just ones that I wanted to make sure I went to. I just was trying to target. So that's the fifth floor. And then there's also a sixth floor marketplace as well. There's this also this marketplace out here. This circle is the, um, the elevator bank right here. So this they had these were full of vendors all around the outside of the elevators and the only way in and out is is um sorry i always lose orientation when i'm just looking at the screen the only way in and out was right here so you had to go here and then you either had to choose to go left or right and these were real choke points i think you can do better with this vogue i really do <laughs> It was really hard to, so if you knew you wanted to go way back here, like oh, way up here on the sixth floor is the stage. Um, that was the layout for where like all the runway shows were and there was a lot of sitting, so like a lot of seating. So if you wanted to, to sit down and chill out, it was easy to like just sit there and you know, there'd be a show about every half hour. There was a little break and then there was a show and then there was a break and then there was a show. So there's plenty to keep you entertained if you needed a rest. Um, other than that, out here on the sixth floor, there was a little bit of a couch lounge, which I think was put in by one of the art displays. So there's usually like a lot of knitting and crochet oriented art, both on, you know, in both of those spaces. So you can also see here, there's all the, these are all booths. Um, so there was more art over here as well. So again, that's the elevator bank. This is the escalator bank over here. So you either had to wind your way through these booths to get to the this. The fifth floor also is the, um, I think that the walkways are narrower. It just seemed more crowded and more confusing um, to, to navigate, like just harder to navigate. And that wasn't too fun. <laughs> I didn't, so what I've now learned is that it's important to know the class schedule. If you know the class schedule and the also the performance schedule on the sixth floor, if you know those schedules, you can time your um, shopping when classes are in session and when shows are going on so that that made it a bunch uh, you know quite a quite a lot easier um i ended up i'll tell you well that's saturday i'll tell you saturday saturday so i began with the fifth floor i wanted to work my way i had i know plucky knitter this was their first time at um vogue so and i had heard from other shows on the west coast where plucky had attended and in the in the um central area region where Plucky had gone. I had heard that their booths are really, really crowded and um, tough to navigate, but that they also have some really cool, interesting things that you can't always get online. So I was super interested in seeing that. I, um, I own, I had bought two skeins of this Primo Sport, and Primo, if you're not familiar with that base, it's a merino cashmere nylon, but it's a sport weight. 
Um, so I have two skeins of this really just neutral gray yarn. Um, and I, my intention of going to Plucky was to find, I had intended to use this for some for a project that got, um, what's the word? Neglected, not neglected. Just, I never, it never got off the ground. I just, I ended up swatching. This didn't quite work out. So I thought, awesome, Plucky's here. Let me see if I can find something that would hang with this gray. I could not get in the booth. And because it was my first stop um, and the place where I was heading, I was angling in towards, I decided to pass <laughs> and try to circle back at another time when they weren't so busy. Right next door was a new to me indie dyer called Kim. And she is, her entire yarn brand name is called Kim, Kim Dyes Yarn. She's a hand dyer from Virginia. And I had heard, I had I'd watched the Christy Glass preview, and on the preview, Christy said that Kim probably had some limited quantities of dyed yarn, and it might be nice to um, get in there and early, early in the show. So I went right next door, there was no one in the booth. In fact, I was so early, um, most of the other booths, people were still pretty kind of setting up. Like a lot of people were still sort of situating stuff and really getting ready for customers to come in. So I walked into Kim's booth. She was incredibly friendly and lovely. Um, I um, chatted with her a little bit about her, her yarn and um, I've been paying a lot of attention to bases. Like I'm super interested in what indie dyers bases indie dyers use. I mean, there's kind of like a very interesting thing that happens in the indie dye market. A lot of indie dyers buy their yarn from the exact same source. So that's kind of nice because if you have an indie dyed yarn from one vendor and another, and it's say like an 80-20 sock yarn, those can hang together. They're gonna, they're probably the same base, like even from the same mill, because there just aren't that, there's not a mill every block in this country, you know. There's a handful of mills um, by region, and you know, we don't see sheep, like there are no sheep in the area where I live, like I don't see sheep wandering around grazing. Um, so I know that, you know, the, the material, a resource, wool as a natural resource, is limited resource and um, it's going you know two mills so I I was really interested in um, a non superwash base and um, Kim delivered so I bought a sweaters quantity of this this is her shortbread DK base and it's just a beautiful color she calls it Robin's egg and it's absolutely on point um, they're very hefty skeins. It's a Pullworth silk blend, so 8515 Pullworth silk. The ply seems lovely. It's beautiful. It's a nice tw tight twist, so I have a feeling it's going to knit up beautifully. Um, and it's 331 yards put up on a 115 yard, uh, 115 gram skein. So at 331 yards, four skeins is going to be more than enough for a sweater. So she had exactly four, and I bought them. I actually may even be able to get by with three. Um, I don't have a plan for this yarn. I just wanted to be intentful in my purchases. So, um, yeah, and this was a really nice surprise. I actually even surprised myself when I bought it, and I couldn't be happier. I am so excited. I think I'm going to love knitting it. And I think I'm going to love wearing it. It's such a beautiful spring color, too. It's just going to be great. It's going to be a good knit for March when it's still pretty cold in sweater weather here, but you're craving brighter, lighter colors. So, yeah. Super interested in that. Um, so from there, I went down to... I wandered through a few booths, and my... You know, I saw, I was really looking for um, yarns that I found surprising or yarns that I, you know, 
um, had a plan for, like the plucky, I had a plan for. The only other yarn that I really wanted to buy was a mohair. I was looking for a rose gold mohair. I'll get to that in a sec. Um, so I did swing by a couple farm um, farm yarn, like yarn farm, far, farm yarn is probably a good way to put it, farm yarn booths. I did a lot of looking and squeezing and touching without buying um, because I am aware of all the yarn that I have here and I do want to knit through. I probably have enough yarn to keep me busy through June or July. Um, going into Vogue, I had enough to get to keep me busy through June and July if I just knit the projects that, or knit with the sweaters quantity that I have. So I wanted to be mindful of buying sweater quantities and also buying um, things that I was very interested in. So I had seen my next stop was Starlight Knitting Society. They are a Portland, Oregon store, yarns, local yarn shop. And really, really cool. I, they're a great store to follow. I had seen their new t-shirts on uh, Instagram and I really, really wanted to have one. So it's a, it's a really cute, our gorgeous art sort of art deco inspired um, or art nouveau art deco inspired um, knitter on a throne with a tiara it's just beautiful look at her yarn in her hand it's, and a cat there's a cat there's a kitty so I just really really loved it this was the only color that this design came in they had other t-shirts in other colors I was worried that I had it high on my list as one of my first stops because I was worried that they would sell out of t-shirts. I don't know if they ever did. I, I didn't go back. And I also just wanted to look at some of the other yarns that they brought. I had heard on, I love Stitch Together Studio. If you're a returning viewer, you're, you'll know that about me. Um, as an indie dyer, and I had heard that they were bringing some of her yarn. Um, and I also, I knew they had spin cycle yarn and guys like I have become I, I don't know I, I me and spin cycle I <laughs> I'll tell you the same thing that I said on my Brian Beck recap those two women are so super cool I feel like I could be really good friends with them if I ever were given the opportunity they were there they weren't in starlight they were in magpie um in magpie fibers booth I saw them briefly ahead of the whole marketplace opening. They were getting things situated and stuff. Um, I heard from another customer who was in um, Vogue in the Starlight Knitting Society booth that um, Starlight had more colors than than they had brought in ma the Magpie Fiber booth. So, yeah, whatever. I'm not sure if that was true or not it seemed pretty colorful in the um starlight knitting society booth and i have to say like this is becoming a little bit of a habit and i need to stop um but i did buy two skeins of dream state at the starlight knitting society booth the color is called deep bump it's one of their more tonal colors. So if right move behind me here are um, some other spin cycle yarns, you don't really, spin cycle yarns, the magic of them is not really revealed until you cake them. So it's, it's almost like you don't really know what you're gonna get until you cake it. And you can see this, this is Truth Bomb if you're interested. This is the dyed in the wool fingering or sport, maybe it's sport base, sport, sport weight. Um, but it, it makes a rainbow. Um, so I have two skeins of this back here. Um, I do not have this color. This is Dream State, which is the heavier weight. Um, what did they say that it is? I think it's GK. I think it's equivalent to DK. Well, I hope it is anyway, because what I bought these for, I had purchased... I had purchased the Harrisville Design um, Company. They're in Pennsylvania. They're a Pennsylvania-based yarn manufacturer. I had purchased the Nightshade called Last Call, which is the, um, so Nightshades is an American Cormo where they use, I believe it's naturally dark or black, like dark, like as black as black sheep get. Um, Cormo and then they take that black and ply it with a color so this one is plied with the light blue 
yeah, last call. So I had received this in the mail a, a few days ahead of Vogue, and um, I, because I had checked and they weren't going to be at Vogue. There, it was a yarn that I, I was having fear of missing out on <laughs> from Rhinebeck. I had really wanted to get this yarn, but again, it was a very crowded booth, and I thought, mm, I'll come back later, and I never went back after um, Rhinebeck, and then they were sold out for a while. So. I bought these lovely spin cycle yarns to do a little bit of color work, and I think those are gonna be quite nice. Um, I will need to cake these to know for sure, but I, I think it's enough of a contrast. I want it to stay in that blue-green family. It turns out, though, <laughs> these also look quite nice with this. Not as contrasty, though. Um, so I don't know. I, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna swatch it with the nightshades and just take it from there and see see what happens. So that was my Starlight Knitting Society purchase. All right, and from there I'm just gonna keep the map out because it helps me keep track. I did wind my way up and down each aisle, and I did check out things um, that were of interest to me um, in each aisle. Uh, let me see if there's anything else. I stopped in the asylum. Um, Asylum dye, Asylum Fibers dye booth. Um, I really like Stephanie as a person. I think she's so, so nice. And I love what she's doing with her indie dyed yarn. But as you're going to see at the end of this episode, I have a lot of indie dyed yarn. So again, I just looked at it. I noted things that were of interest to me, but I didn't make any purchases. Her booth was really beautiful too. She had a step and repeat. So um, if people, if dyers, or not dyers, but customers <laughs> wanted to get pictures either with her or with, with their friends or whatever, it was really cool. It was very, very cool. She had a double size booth, which that was a win because anybody who had single size booths, it was really hard to get into them. Um, I stopped by, so speaking of that, I stopped by Cat Sandwich's booth. I thought she was sharing with Machete Shop, but it was all Cat Sandwich fibers. Her yarn is so gorgeous. Her sense of color is amazing. Um, and I really, really wanted to make a purchase. I was super encouraged because my, my, my significant other, my partner, he had told me, pick, your out, pick, it, pick out some yarn for yourself that I can give you for Valentine's Day. Just pick out something. And I really thought cat sandwich fibers would just be so awesome. And I thought this is gonna be the yarn he's gonna give me. Her booth was really crowded, really, really crowded. In fact, she was in the back with her husband, I think, I believe it was her husband or her partner, um, who they were joking about having slept on a twin bed. <laughs> from years and years ago that you know so that's how tight it was they were like basically arm to arm like standing next to each other taking you know people's charge cards and and money and stuff and as people circulated so that was a single size booth it was quite quite small like probably about five feet wide by the time all the yarn got in there and then there were people like ba basically only wide enough for three people to stand next to each other, you know, arm to arm. And the person who was in the middle wasn't next to yarn at all. You were just peering over someone's shoulder trying to see it. Um, but I, I managed to get up against the yarn and rotate, go all the way through. So I was able to see everything. I was able to squeeze everything. Um, I really was attracted to her sparkle base, which if you're a returning viewer, you, you've heard me say many, many times, I'm not a sparkle person, but it was really pretty. Um, and I was sad that I didn't get to go back and see it a little more closely or to, like to make a, to actually make a purchase. I saw it as close as I wanted, but to actually make a purchase, I just never made it back. Um, but I think I can buy her yarn online again. I wanted to have a plan. So that was the struggle. I didn't have a plan for what to do with that indie dyed yarn. It, it would just be buying a skein or two that would then sit in my stash until some project comes along that inspired me and, I have enough of that type of yarn. I have yarns that are gorgeous. So I didn't want to just do that. I didn't want to buy for no reason or no plan. I made my way down to Annie and Company um, Needlepoint and Knit because I really wanted to see Alex, Alex, Alex Creates yarns and fiber. I'm not a spinner, but I it's not, I'm not quite ready to go down that rabbit hole yet, but I'm interested in it. I thought about buying some his 
the bats were so cool and interesting. I thought about buying some just to put on display, like just to kind of put in a big glass bowl or something on my coffee table. I just thought that might be cool and interesting, like beautiful to look at and inspiring. Um, but I ended up not doing that. I was trying to pay attention to my dollars. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I didn't buy anything there, but I did enjoy looking. I enjoyed it a lot. Okay, so Brooklyn General was also on the fifth floor, and I was rather anxious to get over there. Um, that booth was bananas as well. They definitely won the prize for the longest checkout line. There, like, I'll give you an example. Okay, so their booth is right here. It was a double wide booth at the end. So this, again, like to orient you, the entrance is over here, either on this side or that side. You come in right here. So the line, the lines, um, the checkout line was at the back of their booth. The line went all the way down the corridor, all the way down the corridor. The booth itself did not look that crowded. You could get in the booth, but when I saw the line, I, I mean, no. Yeah, I was just like, no. They did have a lot of really interesting yarns. They had they had a verb for keeping warm, which I have never seen in the flesh. I've seen it in, online. It's They're a West Coast dyer, a West Coast manufacturer, um, and they have a really interesting, like, sort of small um, manufacturing process, so and they partner with farmers. It's right up my alley, but I was not prepared for the prices. Wow. I think it was like $45 for a skein and you, and you know, five skeins later, you're spending $250 um, on a sweater. So I wasn't prepared for that um, with their, their yarn, but I got to see it and that made me happy. They had a huge amount of La Bien Aime. They had, I was, last time La Bien Aime was at uh, Vogue last year and she only had her single space and which I did and I made a purchase I bought some of her single space I think the way that the checkout was done at that was in, in the Stephen and Penelope booth Stephen and Penelope did not come this time um, so in the Stephen and Penelope booth the way they did checkout was a lot better it was a lot easier it was easy to see the yarn there were people helping um, there was a lot of staff at Brooklyn General the yarn was set up beautifully, a beautiful display, which I can, she posted some pictures on um, online, on Instagram, so I don't think she'd mind if I share them here. Um, beautiful display, and they were good at restocking stuff as stuff was moving, but then you had to wait in that long line, and I just, you know, I looked at everything, and again, not having any plans for that yarn, I thought, beautiful but I'm not gonna get it. Also, it was the most expensive indie dyed yarn in the whole show. Like $35 a skein. Where like Cat Sandwich, I think, for example, I think she was priced around 28. I didn't see anybody ridiculously marking up anything, but I also stayed out of the Do You Knit booth, which she's notorious for doing markups while, <laughs> while at the show. Um, yeah, as I was looking at my Vogue Knitting Live hedgehog yarn from last year, last Vogue, that I had had to buy in the Do You Knit booth, and it was $35 a skein. Mm. So I didn't even go over there this year. Um, just no interest. No interest. Um, Brooklyn General also had Farmer's Daughter yarn, which I wasn't sure what to expect. And they also had Lichen and Lace um, Rustic Heather yarn. Also didn't know what to expect. It was interesting, but I, I just didn't, I wanted to see it, but I didn't really want to buy it necessarily. Um, okay, from there. Oh, and I didn't buy any <laughs> Vogue Knitting Live colors. I bought none. Again, like last year, I bought a lot of Vogue Knitting Live colors and I, they're still in my stash. So I thought, why? Why am I gonna get these colors? Plus, if I really found that I there was a particular color that I fell in love with and I missed out on, most of these indie dyers will be selling it or, or yarn people will be selling it after the fact. So, um, yeah. I saw, oh, so I went over to Conversational Threads after Brooklyn General. So Conversational Threads 
was right here on my map. Another double wide booth. Um, they had a huge selection of Ulan and Life in the Long Grass. Um, I think they also had, wait, let me look at the guide. I want to say they had Spin Cycle. Oh, Spun Right Round. Big selection of Spun Right Round. Um, I had a list of a couple um, Ulan colors that I only have a single skein of, but I love them, and I was wishing I had a sweater's quantity. So I had a list of a couple of those colors, and I was looking specifically for uh, the base and color that I already own because I thought, all right, if I can just get two more skeins, maybe three more skeins, I'll have a, a sweater's quantity. They're all fingering weight. And uh, I thought, cool, awesome. I will be able to make a sweater. But they didn't have what I was looking for. They did have one. Oh, my goodness. I loved it. I was talking, chatting with fellow customers, and we were all ooing and aahing over the Ulan yarn. And... Um, I turned to this one woman and I said, please talk me out of buying this. I don't need any more fingering weight indie dyed yarn right now. And she goes, oh, I was going to talk you into buying it. <laughs> um, but she's like, if you want me to say no, I'll just tell you, you can get it anytime. And I was like, you're right. I can get it anytime. So um, the color was called milk. It's gorgeous. It's like a white base with multicolored speckles. Just so, so pretty. But I ended up, I thought hard about it. I, and I was going to go back. I was going to go back, but I bought something else. Another Indie Dyers yarn up on the sixth floor. So, yeah. So from there, I went up to... Oh, I passed by... I passed by the, the Stephen West... Stephen West booth. He was in there by himself doing book signings because it was the beginning of his book launch. And I was really interested in doing that. But again, long line... Didn't want to buy the book and get a signature. Um, I didn't want to spend an hour to do that. So I waved at him when I went by. He looked amazing, as always, and he's so super friendly and sweet. Um, if you're a huge fan, he's it's definitely worth your time to wait in line to see him. Um, okay, so I went up to the sixth floor, and I um, made a beeline for Neighborhood Fiber Company because I had seen online that she was bringing her mohair and I thought that I would be able to find the rose gold colored mohair. Um, her booth was really crowded. I think Suzanne Summer was in there, um, the designer Suzanne Summer. I think she's from Australia. Um, but Neighborhood Fiber Company is a Baltimore, Maryland based yarn dyer. Um, she's been in business for I think about a decade and I, she uses really interesting unique bases. So her mohair silk blend is a 60-40 blend, 60% mohair, 40% silk. So I was really, really interested in grabbing some and getting and using it. I'm hoping to use it for an as-if tea, but I have um, ordered the yarn that's going to be the base. It's on its way. It's being... Um, it was a pre-order, so I won't have that yarn for a while, probably another couple weeks. I'll probably get it around Valentine's Day. Um, so I purchased two skeins. I was looking, as I said, for a rose gold color because I believe it's the best match for my uh, indie dyed yarn that's that I pre-ordered. But it's just so remarkable and beautiful. It's so super soft. I just really love it. It wasn't expensive either. It's a, I mean, for mohair, it wasn't like I didn't pay a premium. I paid what, probably exactly what I should have. Um, 350 yard put up, um, so a little bit smaller than um, most indie dyers skeins that are the 70-30 blends. Um, I got two skeins. I don't think I need to, but I just figured... Yes, why not? It's such a beautiful, beautiful color. A nice tonal rose gold, which I'm hoping, as I said, would be the as if tea. So, yeah, it's kind of a flesh toned color for me. Um, but yeah, so that's the plan. That's the plan. Speaking of the as if tea, I saw another tea. If I can remember, I'll pop it up here. Um, that was similar. It was a long sleeved version, and there was. I. I mean, if I've got the picture here, 
you'll see what I'm talking about. There was kind of a disconnect between the mohair and the yarn, the base yarn that was used for the body, but it was long sleeve and the body has um, like princess seam lines to sort of gather in the, it looks more like a, a fitted top, I guess, like, but it's all knit, so it's cool like that. I don't think I have enough mohair if I decide I wanna do that. That was that was interesting, something to think about. Something I queued <laughs> for later. Another project, maybe for next year. That was made several years ago, that pattern. I think it's from 2012. Okay, so from, the funny thing too with Neighborhood Fiber Company was the line was really, or not the line, there was, there was a short line. It was not more than two or three people at the time that I was there, um, but the booth was crowded. It was hard to get in there. So I actually leaned over to the woman who owns the company and I said, please, did you bring your mohair? Because I don't know if I want to muscle my way into your booth if there's no mohair at the end. <laughs> and she said, it's in there. Go, go. So I went in. Um, yeah, so that was fun. Um, from there, where did I go? I went up and down the aisles for a little bit. I went to the Shelly Can booth. Oh, that was on that floor too. Wait, yeah, she was on the fifth floor too. She had these candles that were awesome. I should have bought one. They sold out. Boo. They were based on an old fashioned. I loved old. I love old fashions. I love this the taste of orange and scent of orange. I love citrus scents. Yeah, boo, boo me. I should have picked it up, but I was in a hurry to get to Neighborhood Fiber Company. Um, and I ended up not buying any pins or stickers or anything because, see that bowl right there? That bowl right there. It's full of pins that I've bought over the last couple years and they're still on their cards. I don't use them. I don't know why, I just, I you know, I had some pins on my bags, on my project bags and they fall off and I lost a couple. So that just made me wary of it. So. So yeah, no, no pins for me. Well, the booth was really nice though. I maybe should have spent a little more time there and purchased a candle. Um, okay, so where else did I go? Let me look at my, oh, I went over to, I swung by the Green Mountain Spinnery booth. I just wanted to see if there was anything. I have two sweaters quantities in my projects for that I'm hoping to get done in the first half of this year. Um, and I just wanted to see if there was anything I had to have, and there wasn't. <laughs> it was just stuff that I could wait to buy. Um, then I went to Long Island Yarn and Farm because, um, as you know, if you're a returning viewer, I have two designs um, in her store that she purchased from me, and um, they that she she bought the design, so she owns them. She owns the distribution rights. I'm gonna pop a picture of both of them here. So you can see there's a shawl and there is a cardigan. Um, the shawl is called a Brewster shawl. I didn't catch the name of the cardigan. Hopefully I can find it online so I can show you. Otherwise, um, here you go. Um, so I just popped in to say a quick hello uh, because on Saturday I spent time, like significant time hanging out in the booth and talking with customers. So that was really fun. Um, so from Long Island Yarn and Farm, I went up to Clinton Hill Cashmere. Because as you may know, I had made a cashmere sweater for the Christy Glass Happy Birthday Knit Along. Just wanna see how I'm doing time-wise. Oh good, I wanna stay under an hour if I can. Um, and I finished that sweater. I was planning to wear it to Vogue and then I decided not to add a mishap and decided to not wear it. It's fine, the sweater's fine. It's just my own mishap. Um, but I had two and a half extra skeins, which seemed pretty significant. That Those Clinton Hill cashmere skeins are about $48. So I had over $100 worth of yarn. So I thought, you know, I think I'm gonna purchase a little bit more yarn in a different color and do some sort of pullover striped body. So. I bought a sweater's quantity of this lovely charcoal gray. I don't know what the, t what the name of the gray is, but there's only five colors or six colors in the DK. And um, Rebecca or Becky, who owns Clinton Hill, she was in the booth and we had a nice chat. She um, talked to me about 
my sweater that I had finished because I would posted pictures on um, Instagram. I met her mother. I met her cousin. And uh, yeah, it was, it's like she had a small booth, but it was well laid out and easy to navigate. And I ended up having to wait for another customer to finish looking at and selecting their DK before I was able to. And I, um, the two colors that I have are the black, which is onyx, and then the sand color, or the sand is like the color of my wall. So, so if you look over here, you can see the blackboard with the sand. That was the, the sweater that I made. So then adding the gray in as the body, my plan is to do a top-down um, pullover. I think I'm gonna end up making my own pattern because I have a pretty good idea of what I want and I haven't seen anything that I that I really love. So I wanna play around with the stripe with a striping layout with those three colors. So again, the main body will be this um, beautiful gray and um, the other, the stripe, I'll be striping in the, the sand color and the black. So, so keep an eye out for that. That'll be coming up in my knitting. I'm, tr I'm gonna try to finish this by April 1 because um, it'll be my second sweater in the Christy Glass Knit Along because <laughs> I already posted my other one. Um, and I thought it would just be fun to do a second one because the yarn is so, mm. So this was my big splurge at Vogue knit, uh, Knitting Live this, this year. And this is what, this is probably what kept me from splurging on other yarn, like some of the indie dyed yarn. I also swung by, let's see, so that was, is that, is that, no, I, it is not my, the end of my Friday. Um, I swung by the Stephen B booth, which is, I think it was a three or four, he usually gets three, four, four booths. I wanted to go by there because Sam of Lavender Loon was there and I love her yarn. She's one of my favorite indie dyers. I just, I have like probably about five or six indie dyers whose yarn I purchase regularly. So I have a few skeins of hers in my stash. I've also knitted quite a lot with it. If, if you're a returning viewer, you, you remember my Christmas sweater. I had used a Christmas yarn color of hers in that sweater that I had purchased last year. So I purchased it in 2017, in December of 2017, because I was having a very dramatic experience around the holidays and it was called Holly Drama. So I was just like, yes, this is speaking to me right now. So I purchased it and stashed it. And um, this for this holiday season, I decided to make a Christmas sweater. So I used it. And she had commented on it and said how much she loved it. And I wanted to just swing by and say hi and say I'm the one who knit the Christmas sweater with the Christmas trees and the striped sleeves. So I had striped her yarn on the sleeves. It's just a beautiful jewel tone, red, red based jewel tone with all these Christmassy um, colors in it, like bright green and blue and all these beautiful colors. So we hugged and I looked at what she had there and fell in love, fell in love with this scrumptious. Wait, I have to show you this one. This scrumptious, scrumptious yarn. This way. It's so pretty, look at it. And it has like these um, hits of gold in there. You can really see it on this skein here, right there. So this colorway is called Seance. It is her 8020 base, which I love knitting that base. Um, it's got a nice ply. So I bought a sweater's quantity. I have a third skein over here of this. Bought a sweater's quantity of this. I'm planning to do this. I think this is gonna be my sinister cat again. Um, so I was playing around this morning with yarns in my sash to see what I would make the cats out of because I have a white and I have a, a black and a gray um, toothy wool, like woolly wool farm yarn wool um, that I thought would, would be fine. Like as I was looking at this, I was like, oh, I could do white cats. They'll contrast perfectly. I can do a black yoke even or something like that. I don't know. But wait till you see. <laughs> In my sash, I remembered that I had this brilliant, bright pink. This is Sorry Not Sorry from Hedgehog Fibers. And I thought, well, those will make pretty cats. So I think I'm going to do that. And then I think my yoke color is going to be this beautiful color 
that was also from my stash, The Life in the Long Grass. Um, Life in the Long Grass, if you're unfamiliar, she's a hand dyer in Ireland, and um, she tends to, her colors are quite soft. It, she's like the Irish version of Sweet Sparrow. So if you buy, if you know Sweet Sparrow yarn, Sweet Sparrow, her, her colors are quite soft, beautiful, but soft. Not vivid and tense, necessarily. Um, so I think, this way, <laughs> I think this is going to be my sweater. So this will be the yoke, this this beautiful pale pink called Damask. It's like a tonal pink with hits of brown in it. The bright pink will be my cats, and then the rest of this will be the body. Yes, yes, right? Yes, so pretty. So yeah, I think that's, that's the plan. I need to do some swatching. I want to make sure that um, I'm going to get enough contrast with those colors, um, with the, the pink and the lavender loon so i need to do some caking and some swatching and then yeah to be continued you'll see that on my regular episode okay i think that wraps up my friday that was the end of friday so i did some pretty good damage with my bank account on friday um i on saturday i didn't make i didn't want to get to the marketplace right when it opened because I was planning to hang out with some nitty friends in the evening and I knew it would be a very long day. So I didn't do the subway storm that Christy Glass organized. It looks so fun and one of these years I'm gonna get there. I just have to make sure I'm free <laughs> or that I can just go home when I'm ready to go home um, at some point in the day. So I was have I had the opposite problem where I was planning to meet up with people and after the show and uh, that doesn't end until 6 30 so i knew i was in for a really long day so i made plans to arrive somewhere in that 12 to 1 zone hey guys going into vogue for the second day it's a lot colder today um i drove in today because i'm heading to an after party uh, in long island city which driving wise is only about 45 minutes from my house but to to uh take the subway or in series of trains and buses or whatever it would take me two hours <laughs> so I know myself I'm gonna be really exhausted I thought about uber but I don't really like making chit chat with the driver especially at the end of a long day so super excited to be back um, for a second day I've been thinking through whether or not I want to go attempt to make more purchases I think I'm going to I just yeah we'll see I'll let you know I'll let you know and I had talked to Tabitha of Long Island Yarn and Farm and had she had invited me to hang out in her booth. So I went to hang out in her booth. And her booth, just to give you a reminder, her booth is right here, right next to the stage. Well, that turns out to be a blessing and a curse because this what happens is that people, so the stage is here and people crowd all around and in the aisles um, next to the stage and on the sides over here to watch because if it's a good show like people will stand there and watch maybe they don't want to sit down they just want to see a few minutes so it was really like a crushing crowd right up against that stage basically and then um the booths are right there so and it's it can be loud the music can be fun and energizing or nauseating depending on who you are and how you feel at that particular moment but it was for me it was fun i enjoyed hanging out in their booth i got to see melissa and lisa they came by um the booth and we chatted a little bit and um i didn't differentiate who i was for them i just was talking to them about tabitha's yarn and um tabitha was busy so i didn't um get an opportunity to introduce her though we i did find an opportunity later to introduce her um later in the evening to them so that was fun um and it sounds like they might be interested in stocking her yarn because they're if you don't know them they're from Aspas Trico. I don't know if I said that. So Melissa and Lisa from Espastrico, um, which is a knitting yarn shop, local yarn shop in Montreal. So um, yeah, so I was excited to chatter with them about her yarn and um, talk about how much we love it. So uh, yeah, so that was fun. And I also met and talked with Zandy Peters. And um, the cool thing about Zandy is that she was 
the original impetus for the shawl that I designed for Long Island Yarn and Farm. So she knows Tabitha quite well. Um, her mother actually had knitted her fox paw pattern in Tabitha's yarn and it was hanging in the booth. So, um, and that attracted a lot of a lot of people. I'll put a picture of the pattern here so in case you're not clear on what that is. So that was really fun, like talking with Zandy. I, I told Zandy I'd taken her center out um, knitting class, so learning how to knit from the center out in different shapes and patterns. And I had, um, I had used that, what I learned in that class as inspiration for the shawl that I designed for, for Long Island Yarn and Farm. So that was, it was really cool to connect with Zandy on that and show her the shawl. And they were very excited. Her and her mom were very excited about seeing it and they took pictures of it so that they could show it to the class that she was doing center out again. So just to say, this is what you can do with it. It's like something that you can, you know, this is what one of her, her past students did with it. So that was really, really fun. She had a beautiful sweater on. I wish I could have studied it. <laughs> It was really, really pretty. Maybe she's got a picture of it on um, her Instagram. I'll have to take a look. So yeah, I hung out there for a few hours until my feet were tired. And um, I decided I was really hungry. I hadn't eaten um, lunch yet. So I decided to go upstairs to the to the restaurant and uh, get, get off my feet and eat a little bit and drink a little bit. And... Um, my thought was I'm going to head back down to the marketplace. I had a couple of things that I really wanted to go and see. Um, I had remembered that Loop Studio was at, I think they're a fifth floor. Yeah, I think it's called Loop Studio. Um, I had remembered that Loop, stu Loop Fiber Studio was um, here at Vogue. I had walked by their booth and I didn't go in the first on Friday. So on Saturday I wanted to go back and check them out. And then um, I also wanted to go back to the Fiberists. Let me just make sure I'm saying their, the name of their... Yeah, the Fiberists. So the Fiberists are the company that um, they wear lab coats. They've been on Christy Glass. They've been interviewed by her. They have a super interesting... I didn't actually even go into their booth. I They had... They had a new yarn out that was made out of bison and silk hanging outside their booth actually. So I felt it and it felt really crisp and um, one of the employees saw me looking at it and she came over and said this is what it looks like. This is the this is it after it's been washed in the washing machine. And the, it was really interesting. It almost felt like linen in the skein but then washed it felt like the softest, most beautiful sort of mohair and wool blend ever oh my god so gorgeous so I had seen that on Friday and I was obsessing about it I couldn't stop thinking about it Friday night I couldn't stop thinking about it Saturday and so sitting up eating lunch I was reflecting on where I wanted to go um, and I thought I would go by loop and I would go by fibrous the fibrous and talk with them about their yarn um, and pick some up so that's exactly what I did um, let me, since I've gotten you all interested in the fibrous yarn, let me show you that first. So I ended up talking to Spencer, who's the owner, about his yarn, and he showed, told me about another show that he'll be doing soon. So I decided that I would just buy one skein so I could play around with it, and then make a plan and go back with a plan. So I got this one skein. I think the color is called rose gold, but it's this beautiful sort of mauvey. Um, color like I think mauve is like the best way but it's a good it's a good color for my skin tone so yeah I mean I wish we need feel screens you could actually feel it um, but it's stiff it almost seems like a linen so I need to get this caked and start messing around with it and playing with it so I can make a plan with it um, yeah it's American Buffalo too so that's exciting so I don't know where they get the, the silk is called Munga silk. So I have to do a little research on that and figure out and maybe it's probably stuff on their website that I'll be able to find out about. They also have these little things. I don't know if you ever do, if you ever use any of these, I gotta try, the, I gotta see what happens. You can scan these with your phone and usually what happens is that you get a video or some sort of um, something. So curious to see, there's a bunch of them there. And I think two may be the same, so yeah. 
That's cool. And then loop. The fun thing about loop is that what they do is, let me show you this one. Yeah, that's like a cocoa brown, I think. What color? Damned if you don't, this is called. So what loop does, they do what they're what are called yin yang. So they they have a four ply yarn where they do um, one skein will be three plies of this natural sort of taupey color, and then um, the third ply is a color. So the color here is like a deeper version of the base, and then they'll do the opposite. So they'll do three of the brown, this brown tone that's in there. They'll put three plies of that with one ply of the white. And so you end up with this yin-yang, these complementary pairs. So I thought that was interesting, but I was feeling really artsy and rebellious when I went into their booth and I put together I didn't pick any pairs <laughs> I put together a palette I told them that I was a designer I forgot to ask if they do yarn support so I may go back to them and ask them about that um, depending on how this works out but I put together this set so this little set of four this is a neon yellow like acid neon yellow. So this is the four ply white or taupe, natural, I would say natural, with one ply neon yellow. And then there was the opposite of this, which was three ply neon yellow, one ply natural. I picked up this pink, which is four ply pink, one ply natural. And then of course they had the opposite. So what's this one? And all the names are complimentary. So this is called Kiss. I wonder what the other one was called. I have to go look at it, look it up. This color is called Shine. Um, this one I showed you before, it's called Damned If You Do. I bet you, uh, Damned If You Don't. I'm sure the other one is called Damned If You Do. Um, and then last I picked up this plum. That's four plies of plum, like a plum color or burgundy. One ply of the natural. There we go. Now you can see it. This is called Body. And I know the other one, I remember the other one was called Soul. It's just really sumptuous, beautiful yarn, 100% extra fine merino. I bought the fingering weight. I don't know what these are gonna be, but I needed something to play with. I just needed to play with color and I just love the feel of it. And I love the way it knit up. I don't know, it may be, who knows? I might end up needing to buy other colors, but I liked the way these colors were playing together with these sort of like very you know, regular sort of colors with these two irregular kind of colors. <laughs> so some, some combo, like you could do, I could do that. I could do that. Look at that, that, that's awesome. I love that. That would work beautifully or this. This is probably my least favorite. Yeah, so something to play with, something to play with. That was that was about it. And I think that's all, I think that's all. Oh, I forgot to, to say, I meant to talk about this at the beginning. I went to Tinder Buttons because I have two um, sweaters planned, two cardigans planned. Um, so I, I took this swatch with me. This is um, Stranded Dye Works uh, Aran Weight yarn that I'm using to make the Winterfell cardigan. And then I took, this is some of my Green Mountain Spinnery. This is the color Brick and this is their DK Weight. Um, I think the yarn is called Music. Anyway, all the details will be on screen. The holes that you're seeing here were not to try buttons in. They're, um, the number of holes indicate the um, needle size that I used for the swatch. So that's my way of, so I don't have to write it down, I can just remember. So here I swatched two different sizes. So you're seeing two sets of holes there. Anyway, took my swatches up to um, Tender Buttons, which is a tiny, very old, from 1962 to now, um, button shop. So lots of unique, beautiful buttons, antique buttons, all different button prices, um, but gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous buttons. So I purchased buttons for both of these cardigans. So let me show you what I bought these for the, for 
for the Stranded Dye Works of the Winterfell cardigan is they're amazing. Look at that. Didn't I do good? Wait, I gotta show this so that it, so that you get, yes. So this is a glass button. Um, it has a little bit of marcasi in the center, that center part. That's uh, Marcasi is a, a way to cut steel or metal, like a way metal is cut. I think there, there might be, I think those are just um, glass cut on the side. So those other sparkles are just glass cut. Um, but yeah, it's a combination metal and glass button. It was very expensive. Very expensive. <laughs> but you know what? This is, it's just, they're going to look amazing on this purple yarn. Yeah, I think they're really, really awesome. So I've already, this sweater's already in progress. So I expect it'll be done soon since it's air and weight. For my uh, Green Mountain Spinnery yarn, I picked out this button. So I'll just show you on the sweater. Yeah, so it's a horn button, um, which means it's made from animal horn. I actually don't know. This may be, and then they dye it. And um, this might be polyamide. I, I don't recall. I just like the shape, so I don't know if you can see it. It's like got a wave to it. So I really like the shape. And the pattern called for 10 buttons, so I looked for a less expensive button because I, I had to buy 10 of them. Um, so, yeah, I thought, I thought you know, I, I tend to be pretty indulgent, in case you haven't noticed, <laughs> with myself. So if I can afford it, I, I tend to, um, oh, there it is. I tend to buy uh, what I want when I'm making, when I'm doing my knitting and stuff. And then the, at one point for those red buttons, the man, the owner had to run downstairs to his stock room to um, make sure, or to get me more, because he didn't have enough in the box. He only had six and I was asking for 10. So while he was in the stock room, I was a little worried that he wouldn't be able to find what I needed. So I kind of said, all right, that's a good second choice. That's a good third choice. So I just kind of laid out some options for myself. And at the same time, I um, saw these lovelies cat button and I just thought it was so so cute it's a shank a little shank button got the sew and shank in the back and I didn't know I was planning to purchase yarn for my cat again for my sinister cat again but it turns out so I only bought six of these I wasn't sure how many they weren't that expensive they were in the middle of those other two um Wait, I'll give you an idea. I'll tell you the price. I'll reveal. I'll reveal what I spent. These buttons were $2 a piece, so $20 on buttons. These ones, six. Six dollars each for these buttons. These guys were two or three dollars each. They're they're not an antique button. That's a more modern, um, more here and now kind of technique. Uh, it's um, like a resin, a poly resin over a picture um, that's been printed on metallic. So it's like got a, it's got that rose gold or coppery color um, cat in there. But guess what it looks amazing with? This yarn from Lavender Loon. So super excited. I now have um, all everything I need, assu assuming that the swatch works. Um, but I just thought, you know, these are these are neutral enough. That they would they would go with a lot of different things, and it was actually pretty funny. The guy that the clerk at the store that was helping me, not the owner, because um, the owner checks you out, but he has clerks. The clerk at the button shop that was helping me, when I pulled this off the shelf, he was like, "Oh, those will look good with that purple swatch." And I was like, "No, no, 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 no. There's these will go with whatever." Like he was trying to help me. He's like, "I think these would look really nice on a sweater." It was really funny. I was like cracking up. Um, so yeah, the good thing to know about that shop though, by the way, if you do ever go there, is that they are pretty much cash only. Um, I chattered with them a little bit and I made a big sale. So I was I was going to be a big sale. So I had asked, I was, 
I was saying to the man, I was like, I don't have limitless amounts of cash on me. And I don't walk around with very much because it's so easy to use your charge card everywhere. And um, he told he told me that if I made a minimum order of $50, I would be able to charge it. So I was fine um, with the prices of those buttons. I did fine. Um, so he was able to uh, let me use my card. But generally, if you're not planning to spend $50 on buttons, you should go with cash um, to that shop. Um, but I love it. I love it. Um, it's in a great neighborhood, too. It's right actually near one of my son's um, apartments. So I just always forget about it. I don't always need buttons either. Oh, I didn't tell you about Plucky. I went to Plucky on Saturday night too. So I went shopping on, um, after I ate, I decided to wait until the last hour. So I was able to get into the booths. That was the cool thing. So I thought after I was done with um, the Fibrous and Loop, I swung by Plucky to see if I could get in the booth and I could. So I bought three skeins of this Primo sport weight um, called Aunt Bootsy. I don't know what it means, but it must have some meaning to the dyer. And you know, it turned out that that's gonna look quite nice with the gray I already have. So that'll become something. I actually have an idea. It's gonna be a new design um, that I'm working on. Um, so yeah, stay tuned. Hey, it's me again. I forgot to tell you or show you my Epic D stash. So I have, I'm not going to show you everything, but I just want to kind of give you a little taste. Like I have a whole bunch of fingering weight yarns that I'm de-stashing on Ravelry. So go over there and check it out. If you're in the market for indie dyed um, yarn and you want a good price, because we all know these run around 28 to 30 something dollars. Um, I'm selling them for $23 a skein plus your shipping. And uh, if you buy five or more, the shipping's on me. Um, so, yeah, go over to my Ravelry and check it out. I'm doing kind of a low key de stash right now. Um, but I'm going to, like, you know, start raising the stakes and make it a little higher. <laughs> High key, a little more hyper. Um, de stash, like, I'll put an announcement on Instagram and all of that. So, but if, but. For my viewers, for you who are watching, um, please uh, take advantage and go see um, if you're interested in seeing some of my indie dyed yarn. Um, it is mostly all of my singles, so my single plies, because it's and they're all there's nothing wrong with them. They're all amazing and gorgeous, gorgeous yarns. Um, I just am in a place where I'm not knitting with them, and they need to be rehomed. Where to a place where they will get knit with. So I'm hoping that's you. So please reach out to me on Ravelry if you're interested in um, any of them. And, uh, you know, we'll do a PayPal and I'll get them out to you as quick as I can. Okay? Well, I hope you will like and subscribe. And um, I hope that you will come back and check out what I make with the my gorgeous purchases. I hope you got enough of a teaser and taste that you do want to come back. I usually look much more dressed up <laughs> than I am right now. I usually I usually dress up for my viewers, but today I was just kind of tired and not really feeling so um, inspired to do all of that and all of this. And so you're getting the, the, the lazy me today. <laughs> all right. Hope you have a happy Sunday. Take care. Bye.